Good morning. Um, thanks for joining the uh, webinar this morning. Um, apologies for the slight delay. I had a couple of technical difficulties getting us all set up. Um, what I'm going to do is just uh, go back on mute for a minute. But if anyone could just uh, write in the, the, the question and answer box that you can in fact hear us. Um, I'll give it a couple of minutes for people to join. But if anyone could just confirm into the Q&A box that you can actually hear us um, and then we'll start at maybe two minutes past or three minutes past. Thank you. Well, it's two minutes past nine now. Um, nobody has responded in the, the Q&A. Um, so just if you could just respond just to confirm that you can in fact hear us, um, that would be great. Um, I still want to do the presentation and nobody hear us. If, so if anyone could just confirm that in the chat box. Um, while we're waiting, um, my name is Peter Edwards, Principal Clean Air Zone Officer within the Clean Air, Clean Air Zone team. This morning session is our monthly uh, business clinic. Uh, so what we will do is uh, the beginning of the presentation will be about how, why the Clean Air Zone is being implemented, when, how it will work, that sort of practical information. And my colleague, uh, and we'll also talk about exemptions um, that are available. Then my colleague Kanchan will join. Uh, she is going to talk specifically around the HDV fund, so a pot of funding um, that is available for SMEs in the city, well, in the wider region. She will give more detail on that. And then we'll finish by um, setting the context with some information about the Birmingham Transport Plan. Uh, and then finally, uh, at the end, um, there will be question and answers. So once I go into uh, presentation mode, I can't see those questions and we won't be addressing those till the end because that's just the way that, that the webinar software works. So we're not ignoring you. We will get to the questions at the end. Um, so nobody has confirmed whether or not they can hear us. If you please could just write in the little, uh, there's, a cute, there's a box that has like a question mark in it. Um, that would be appreciated just so I know I'm not talking to myself. I'll give it into, I'll give it one more minute and then I'll, I'll just start the presentation and just hope that you are you are hearing us. I guess if you weren't hearing us, you probably would have wrote in the chat as well. OK. Oh, there's. No. Well. Canton, you can hear us. OK, we'll just go with that. OK, so I'm going to make the presentation full screen now. Uh, and crack on. So this morning is obviously all about the clean air zone, starting off talking about why we need a clean air zone. I'm not going to go through all of the stats on the screen here, but we are implementing a clean air zone in response to a public health emergency. This is a national public health emergency. This is a, impacting people's health uh, across the country. But in Birmingham, it's been linked to up to 900 deaths across the city, um, linked to some fairly horrible diseases that you can see down the side, asthma, heart disease. Um, and I think it's important to note that actually the most vulnerable people in our society are the people who are affected the worst. So that's young children and young people whose young uh, lungs are still developing if they're living in a toxic environment it can stunt the growth of their lungs elderly people and people in uh, in in more deprived areas tend to suffer the most also we know that people who drive a lot so your bus drivers and your taxi drivers they're also exposed to a lot more pollution than than people who don't um so this first slide is just kind of to set the scene of why why 
it is needed uh, and the level of the issue that we have in this city uh, when it comes to poor air quality. Um, the challenge for Birmingham um, is, is, is shown fairly plainly on screen there. Um, most of the vehicles on Birmingham's um, roads are private motor vehicles um, and perhaps most importantly 46% of the NOx emissions, that's nitrous oxide, so that is the the uh, the horrible um, pollutant that we are seeking to reduce the most. 46% of that is coming from diesel vehicles, um, but they obviously, they're, so they're creating a disproportionate amount of um, pollution and that's why when we come to the compliance standards later in the presentation, you'll see that it's more restrictive for diesel vehicles than it is for petrol. So, Birmingham is going to introduce a clean air zone, a category D clean air zone. So a clean air zone is an area where targeted action is, is taken to improve the air quality. This is um, something that is being government mandated uh, and will start from the 1st of June 2021. We will be outside of London. We will be the second city to, to go live with a clean air zone. In London, they call theirs an ultra low emission zone. Bath will go live with their clean air zone in March. Um, and then we will go on the 1st of June 2021. So the, the, the image on screen shows you the area covered by the Birmingham Clean Air Zone. So it's all roads within the middle ring road, the A4540, but not the ring road itself. From the 1st of June 2021, if you drive a car, a vehicle, sorry, that doesn't meet the, uh, the compliance standards, which are detailed at the bottom of the slide there. So it's Euro 4 for petrol, which is around about 2006 onwards, and, two, uh, and Euro 6 for diesel, which is about 2015 onwards. Then each time you drive into the zone, there would be an eight pound charge. Um, and the idea being that this will discourage people in those vehicles to, to drive in or uh, to upgrade their vehicles or to seek other ways, more sustainable ways of traveling into the zone. We are introducing a category D clean air zone, which is different to Bath. So if you go onto the government's vehicle checker, and that's the first kind of main action to take from this presentation and for, you, for your preparation for the clean air zone is to go and check your vehicle. This is not a congestion charge, so not all vehicles will be charged, only vehicles that um, do not meet the compliance standards. So the first thing you need to do is to go to the Brumbreeds website and check your vehicle. When you check that vehicle, you will likely, if you have a non-compliant vehicle, you will see that you are charged here in Birmingham, but not in Bath. That is because Bath is introducing a category C uh, clean air zone where private motor vehicles won't be charged. But as we saw from the previous slide, Birmingham's fleet is dominated by private motor vehicles that we have a big issue. We have too many private motor vehicles on our roads. Um, so private motor vehicles, taxis and, and small goods uh, vehicles like vans will be charged eight pounds a day. Large vehicles, HGVs, buses and coaches will be charged 50 pounds a day. Um, just in terms of how it will actually operate, the zone will be um, ringed by cameras. Um, those cameras will pick up, will will check your registration plate, and if you're non-compliant, you will then have a 13-day window to pay the charge. So you can pay six days in advance of your visit, you can pay on the day, and then you can pay six days after. There will be around 300 signs deployed in and around the zone telling you that you're entering the zone. So it's really important to note that you will not get a notification telling you to pay. You will not get a text message. You will not get an email. It is the driver's responsibility to be aware that they've driven into the zone in a non-compliant vehicle and then to make that payment. That will be done over the phone um, or or over the or, or on the .gov website. Now, given the, the nature of uh, the audience on this call, the other thing to talk about is is kind of um, fleet options. So you're, some of you may operate a fleet. So there is already the opportunity to set up an account on the .gov website. So when you go to check your vehicle, it will ask you if you want to just do one singular vehicle, or if you want to set up an account for multiple. So you will be able to set up a, an account for your fleet and then be able to pay for each, ve each vehicle that goes in. It won't, however, be an auto pay function, so it won't just automatically, you can't just put a thousand pounds in there for your fleet and then it be deducted. There will need to be a manual process to do that. That's all been done by the by 
by the government, not by us. But you can look at that uh, feature. That feature is registered. Open to register now because obviously people may need to be driving into Bath next month. The final thing in terms of just the overview of how it will work and operationally is to note that it operates on a on a midnight to midnight basis. So if you drive into the zone at 9 a.m., you can drive in and out of that zone as many times as you would like until 11.59 p.m. That is one charging day and you would be charged eight pounds for that. However, let's say you drive into the zone at 10 p.m. and then leave at 2 a.m. You have then crossed over the uh, the midnight threshold and there would be a, there would be two charges. So that's something to be aware of to make your staff aware of, make your fleet drivers aware of make, um, and make yourself aware of. I should have said right at the beginning, apologies, that this is all being recorded. These slides will be shared afterwards. So all of this information will be sent to you after the after the call. So don't worry if you miss anything, but of course we will also have Q&A at the end. So what the Clean Air Zone is trying to do, and I've already touched a little bit on this, is, is trying to reduce the number of journeys that need to be made. Are all of those journeys essential? Can some of those journeys be, uh, be, be, and then can some of those journeys be shifted to public transport, walking and cycling to more sustainable measures? And where those journeys absolutely have to be made in a private motor vehicle or a van or a lorry, can that vehicle be made cleaner and be improved? So can it be upgraded to Euro 6? Can it be upgraded to Euro 4? And for, for these three, three kind of shifts, we hope to see that the air quality is brought within the, the, the compliance standards required by government by the end of 2021. So we know that the clean air zone being the second one outside of London, we know that this is a new concept and it's 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 a challenge for for people, um, for people, for business. So what we have is a range of exemptions um, and uh, additional incentives available for people that work and live in the zone and these are detailed on the screen now um, these are all avail available to apply online now and if you have a non-compliant vehicle you the next thing i would suggest you do is to look at our terms and conditions read through all the exemptions information see if you might be eligible for them and to encourage friends family colleagues contractors whoever it is that you come into contact with to do the same so you can see them on screen so residents who live within the zone can access up to two year clear, uh, exemption from clean air zone charging perhaps more relevant to the people on this call are the next two and that is um people who work look people who work in the clean air zone and earn less than thirty thousand pounds a year can access a one year exemption they need to also be able to prove that they work 18 hours a week as a minimum within the zone so just working one shift on a saturday uh, in the clean air zone would not make you eligible for for that uh, clean air zone worker exemption the next one is for commercial vehicles so these are vehicles that are registered within a bit with a business within the clean air zone can access a one year exemption and finally, people, uh, visitors, patients to the children's hospital and two other medical centres within the zone that offer out of hours or emergency services, they will also be able to access an exemption. The other ones I've talked about up until this point, that's all available to apply online. Now, the visitors to the hospitals is a slightly different uh, system, which is in development at the moment, whereby people will be issued with a voucher when they visit that that centre and they will then need to um, upload that voucher onto onto a, a website. In addition to those um, kind of publicly available applicable exemptions, shall we call them, there are also a range of other exemptions available um, and these are being administered in a, in a, in a different way, uh, may not be relevant to everyone on the course. So I'll just run through them quickly. Perhaps it's most important to say that having a blue badge does not um, entitle you to an exemption from clean air zone charging. However, if you're in receipt of um, some disability benefits like PIP and a couple of others, then your vehicle may have a disabled passenger tax class. And if it does, this is listed on the V5 and there's information on the .gov website about how you go about changing this if you're eligible, then you would have a national exemption from clean air zone charging. Motorcycles are exempt and then we've got specialist vehicles like historic vehicles, agricultural vehicles, military vehicles, vehicles that you wouldn't really expect many to be coming through the zone. 
would have an exemption. Also, of course, emergency services vehicles have an exemption. And finally, community and school transport. So that's the likes of your, your ring and ride, um, not for profit transport. They can also access an exemption. So we've talked about the exemptions and the way exemptions are built to work is to give people um, some breathing space and some time to work out what they're going to do. What follows on from that, and some of these are available to apply now, and Kanchan's going to go into more detail on some of them, is on one of them in particular, is funding pots are available to help people to, to, to upgrade and change their behaviour. So the one um, for people who work in the zone, and we're going to have a scrappage scheme, whereby if you scrap a non-compliant vehicle, um, you will be able to access up to £2,000 um, for, uh, sorry, you will get, if you scrap a vehicle via our scrappage scheme, a non-compliant vehicle, you will be given £2,000 either towards the price of a new compliant vehicle or a SWIFT card and mobility credit. So it's used on public transport across the West Midlands network. That scheme is not yet live. Um, it's in development. We're developing the software and the partner and, and, and procuring a partner to deliver that for us, but it will go live before the, um, the zone goes live. I'm not going to talk about the HDV scheme because Canton is going to pick that up, I think, after this slide. And then the other pot of money we have available is for Birmingham licensed Hackney Carriage and private hire drivers because we know that they do an awful lot of miles within the clean air zone and the wider city. And we're already seeing, I think we've already paid out to around about 1200 drivers. Um, so the zone, as that slide already talked about earlier, we've already seen Birmingham's fleet of taxis and, and private hire already converting to, to compliant and ultra low emission vehicles. So at this point, I think, yes, I'll hand over to Kanchan, who will run through a bit more detail on the heavy duty vehicle fund, and then we'll wrap up and take questions at the end. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. I just uh, wanted to uh, confirm really what is on our website uh, that um, the heavy duty vehicle fund is a part of 10.05 million uh, in total. And this is open for all SMEs who have been in trading for at least 12 months. And uh, it is open to people, all the businesses within, all the SMEs within uh, the West Midlands region. Uh, for you to be eligible, you need to be able to uh, you, you need to be able to evidence that uh, you own a heavy duty vehicle that is non compliant at the moment and uh, you would have the criteria for HDV is the N2, N3 and M3 only. Uh, these vehicles need to be registered within the uh, and located either located within the clean air zone or it should be within Birmingham area or within the West Midlands area and you must be con conducting commercial uh, operations within the clean air zone. So we we are looking for at least uh, one over um, at least more than once a week over a period of three months. So you need to be able to evidence that you're coming into the zone for this. Uh, and I appreciate during COVID time, uh, it may be a bit difficult to evidence this, but uh, we are being flexible in our approach to check your evidences prior to COVID and anything that is uh, ongoing or a future contract that you may have uh, to make sure that nobody misses out on this. Next slide, please. Uh, also, I mean, around the categorization that is about the road freight and non-road freight, I would like to reiterate uh, that since Brexit from 1st of January, that is uh, state aid has been replaced by a new subsidy regime and we are under consultation with legal teams to give us really a proper direction as to the direction. I mean, the 
categorizations we were using was for road freight and non road freight as it shows here in the slide. But um, this uh, I am told by a legal representative that this is going to slightly change. Also, you know, we 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 are able to support the SMEs up to 200,000 euros. So uh, we are not sure. I, I think these figures are going to change. Uh, I un unfortunately haven't got any update as such on this particular thing. So our process overall will not change. It is just this aspect of categorization has changed. So I do apologize. We will uh, once we have an update, we as soon as we have one, we will be updating our website. So and also sending details to all our um, uh, contacts within uh, within the clean air zone. So please uh, look out for these changes to come. Next slide, slide please. Uh, again, like I mentioned earlier on, it is you have to be an SME. You have to be within uh, the West Midlands region and you have to be evidence us that you are coming into the zone for more than once a week over a period of three months. Next one, please. You are um, within this, I mean, the. OK, the evidence that you will be giving us is accounts, your project funding, you need to, I mean, evidence is just project funding. When we say project funding is you purchasing a vehicle or leasing it because you can apply for various things within the HDB fund. It's not just purchase of vehicles. You can retrofit your non-compliant vehicle. You can relocate or exit lease costs. We will pay towards that up to 15,000 uh, pounds. Uh, you can also uh, Yes, I covered the retrofitting, so it, we will uh, under these four categories, we will be able to pay you up to 15,000 per vehicle. Uh, so in that you need to be able to give us evidence of your last two years accounts. If they are older than six months, then we would require management accounts. Project funding, as I was saying, is your how you are going to fund the project that you intend to do after uh, after the approval of the grant. We also will require VFIC and MOT for your HDVs. We would require just the quotes, the tendering. We're trying to make it as easy as possible for the applicants and we've taken off the tendering aspect of it. Uh, so we would still require quotes from uh, at least three quotes of and uh, notifying us which is your preferred uh, supplier. We would re also need a one month full bank statement, your business bank statement. And if you are going uh, by leasing, then we would require evidence of that as well. Further details are here on the website. And uh, next slide, please. And uh, well, these are other support that is available that uh, we there is, uh, you know, for plug in grant schemes towards vans, the HGVs. Now there is electric charging point grants as well. If you home charging, if drivers park their vehicles at home overnight, then you can uh, receive 500 contribution towards installation of this system, the charging point. You can also work. Uh, I mean, work charging. It is for fleet. If you have a centralized depot or a car park, then the government will cover 75% of the costs, uh, up to 20 charge points. That is for per company. That is, and uh, if you got any further information. Uh, or if you need further information or queries, feel free to email us directly and we will endeavor to answer your qu uh, queries as soon as we can. Thank you.
Thank you, Kanchan. Um, uh, Kanchan, there's a bit of an echo. If you could just mute your mic, thank you. Um, so yeah, so we've, as we've already talked about, kind of, um, there's there's a lot going on in the city in terms of of support and, and and options. I think it's important to note, and this kind of slide touches on that it isn't simply the role of the council to improve the the air quality and to reduce carbon emissions in the city we need everyone from individuals from residents communities and businesses to to, to do their bit too and this is all set in the wider context of a, a being within a climate emergency and then further to that unfortunately being in a in a, in a worldwide pandemic um with a, which is a respiratory disease um so this slide is just kind of to to set in context um, the, the wider issues at hand, um, but also just to talk about things outside of the clean air zone that we're doing in, in terms of, so they were, we've signed a contract to install, uh, I think it's 300 plus new electric vehicle charging points across the city. Uh, there was a press release last month um, that money from from central government that, that we procured for the as part of the clean air zone plan has been put towards the purchase of 20 hydrogen buses that we'll see on Birmingham's roads I think in early 22 ahead of the Commonwealth Games and we're also looking to purchase up to 50 electric hackney carriages to, to support that that industry because we know there's not there's only one vehicle on the market at the moment it's very it's, it, it's not cheap for those drivers to buy. So there are lots of other schemes and progress happening across the city contributing to a, a cleaner green.
Apologies, it would appear that my um, internet just completely dropped out. So bear with me one second. I think that was pretty much the last slide, um, but let me just share those slides again. Um, I hope you're all still there and it looks to me like it's just re reconnected me and that you guys didn't drop out. So that's the first time that's happened since we've been working from home, but it was bound to happen eventually. Um, so there's the slides back on screen. I hope you can see them. The one I was talking about was active travel in neighbourhoods. Um, the last one is to demand uh, to ma manage demand by using parking. Um, so removing all free car parking within within the clean air zone and make uh, restricting it around the borders of the clean air zone. Also in in neighbourhoods. I know, for example, on my local high street, they've removed some of the on-street parking to enable more space for people to socially distance uh, and to walk down the, down the high street. So rather than when there's big queues outside certain banks and shops, actually, that there's still plenty of pavement left for everybody else. So these measures are going in at the moment. There's a wider plan to keep on implementing them, and that will give people more options and more convenience to um to to travel more sustainably ahead of the clean air zone going live on the 1st of june okay so that wraps up the presentation Ap apologies for the technical difficulties but it seems to have been resolved um hopefully we've answered a lot of your questions but if there's anything that you don't think we've covered of course we've got the q a now but we've also got our website so the front page of our website brumbreeds.co.uk has three main tabs and it kind of is in the order that we think you want to do it. So the first one, the most important is to check your vehicle. Is it compliant or not? Next one is to look at exemptions. Can you get an exemption? And the final one is, can you apply for uh, a financial incentive? So the taxi scheme is available at the moment and the HDV scheme is the moment and you can express an interest in um, the, the scrappage scheme for workers. Then there are a clean air at birmingham.gov.uk if you can't find the answer you're looking for. And if you have one specifically about the HDV fund that Kanchan was talking about, it's HDV at birmingham.gov.uk. So I will just minimise the slides now so that I can see the screen um, and just check if there are any questions. Um, OK, I'm just going to publish these questions. It looks like any questions that were published um, before my internet went down have remained, but if I don't answer your question, it's because it's disappeared. Um, so if your question, if I don't answer it, I've got four to answer now, but if I don't answer it, it's because it's disappeared, but it looks like this one was from before. Um, why is the zone operational 24 hours a day from midnight? This will affect night workers um, because it's the most practical way to do it. Um, it's in line with how ev or every other zone is done um, and it's the easiest way for people to understand and the easiest way for the te again for the technology. So the, ca the cameras will otherwise have to be like double checking what period you came in. So um, we, are no, we appreciate that it will affect people perhaps who are night workers or shift workers, but it's the most practical um, and easy to understand way that it that it should be done. It can be done. Is the 30k threshold gross earnings or after tax and deduction? It's it's your, it's uh, it's gross. Yeah, it's it's what's it's your salary. Will there be a review to see if there needs to be amendment to the impact of the, the zone, e.g. the 24 hour charging? Um, we're constantly reviewing everything around the clean air zone. This has never been done before. Um, so uh, we've just um, added another scheme for taxi drivers following feedback from their industry that what we had originally proposed wasn't working for them. With the clean air zone worker um, exemption, it used to be a requirement for 21 hours a day, and that has been changed following feedback to 18. Um, so we're constantly reviewing with the 24 hour charging in particular, I would suggest probably not for the reasons that I detailed in my previous answer, because it's practical uh, and, it, and it's clear. Uh, one more question has come through. Um, what geographical area is HDV funding open to? My understanding is that it's open to all SMEs in the West Midlands. Um, Kanchan seems to be replying to your post via, via text, but uh, uh, West Midlands region. Yes, thank you, Kanchan. 
OK, I can't see any more questions um, queued up, but what I will do and what I always do with these things is that I will just mute myself for a couple of minutes um, to see if there's anything else that comes through. If there isn't, we'll end the call. The call's been recorded um, and will be sent out in the, in the coming days to everyone who registered. So even if people registered but weren't actually able to dial in this morning, they will still get a copy of all of this information. So I'll just give it a couple of minutes to see if there's any further questions and then we'll end the call. OK, one second. Right, I don't think there's any further questions that have come through, so I'll end the call. But um, just to say thank you very much for um, dialing in this morning. I hope you found the presentation useful. Um, please visit the website, check your vehicle, spread the word. When we send you the email, please share that with friends, family, colleagues. Um, but yeah, well, thanks again and um, I will end the call now. Thank you. Goodbye.